Hey everybody, it's Tristan, the Knitting Lady. This is my third time again starting this. Just like last night, my son um, wanted to know if I wanted a pattern for those mittens. They're like the ones that Bernie Sanders was were was wearing at the inauguration. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Here, my son is. Passing along knitting patterns. He meant it as a joke, but it is an actual pattern. So I don't know if anybody wants that pattern because I have it downloaded on my phone. <laughs> so I was uh, making the last of my purple carrot meals before. I had ordered them last week and I got them this week too. It's all vegan and vegetarian. And it's nice, but they tend to repeat the same ingredients. They have a lot of nuts, or seeds, I should say. A lot of different seeds. Pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds. So if I don't, if I start to sprout, just water me, okay? <laughs> you know, yesterday when I made my video, I did not mention the affirmative, positive affirmations. Affirmative, yeah. Affirmations. What's from the Daily Book of Positive Quotations. All right. So, for the 23rd, because we missed the 23rd, it's a quote by George Bernard Shaw. Life does not cease to be funny when people die anymore when it ceases to be serious when people laugh. How can we laugh and have fun when so many bad things are happening around us? That's true. Isn't it wrong to enjoy ourselves while others are going through difficult times? Laughter is a gift that can help us through difficult times. We shouldn't be ashamed of smiling when life seems bleak. Laughing may not solve my problems today, but it may very well help me cope with them. I've always used humor and laughter to get me through things. It's, it's the only way I can cope sometimes. I can look at something and, and almost see the, the funny side of it. I have a very dark sense of humor. So today, for January 24th, it's an Irish proverb. And I have my green sweater on. <laughs> Firelight will not let you read fine stories, but it's warm and you won't see the dust on the floor. The most luxurious homes are no more comfortable in a snowstorm than a warm, dry cabin in the woods. The niceties of life mean little when our needs are simple. Warmth when we're cold. Food when we're hungry, sleep when we're tired. We wish for so many things that we think will bring us happiness. Yet we often find ourselves looking back fondly on simpler times. What small things in my life bring me pleasure? I will recognize them today and be thankful for them. It's true. I really don't need a big house anymore. I just need, I think... I might even move to a studio, I'm not sure. Less things to keep up with. The only thing I really need are my family, my friends, and my yarn. <laughs> my art too. But I mean simple things. I don't need a lot of material things. That's what makes me happy. Plus making people smile and laugh. So the birthdays for today. Today, he's 80 years old. He's born 1941. Neil Diamond. I don't know how many of you have been Neil Diamond fans. I liked early Neil Diamond. I didn't like later Neil Diamond, but it's still a talented man. In 1968, Mary Lou Retton was born. You remember her from the Olympics? And John Belushi, he was born 1949 and died in 1982. He was so talented. 
Unfortunately, he had abuse problem, but he was talented. And did you know, ancient Egyptians shaved off their eyebrows to mourn the death of their cats? You know, maybe that's what happened to my eyebrows. <laughs> maybe after my favorite cat died, I shaved off my eyebrows. That was uh, a long time ago, and I haven't grown back since. No, I didn't shave off my eyebrows. I just plucked them too much. Bad mistake. But, hey, you know, a lot of people get their eyebrows done. I don't know what they do. They weave. I don't know what they do. I've often thought about doing that, but I never quite go and do it. So, this is a little trivia for today. Due to his spout with polio, the president, Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, created a charity called the March of Dimes. It was founded in 1938 for work to improve the health of mothers and babies. Then it was called, the original name was the National Foundation of Infantile Paralysis. But singer, comedian, Eddie Cantor coined the phrase March of Dimes. They found, they funded Jonas Stalk's polio vaccine. That's interesting, isn't it? I remember getting that polio vaccine. They ship, but then they shifted the focus to address the prevention of birth defects and in infant mortalities. So a dime was chosen to honor FDR after his death. Now I had to go look at a dime in my, because I save coins. You know, I save them just to cash them in later. I don't save them for any other reason. And I think he's on the dime. It looks a little bit like FDR. I'm not sure. So interesting. March of Dimes, which is still around today. And um, on this day in 1965, Winston Churchill died. The man should have sounded like he had nine lives. He lives to age 90 which was impressive because he suffered so many um, bodily injuries. Now, this is going to sound like my skit from Game of Thrones, which so many ways to die. This is so many ways to be injured. Churchill survived suffering concussion, a ruptured kidney after falling off a bridge. Now, I mean, I've read things about him before, and I read the biography of his mother, Jenny. Now I'm interested to learn, how did he fall off a bridge? A near, near drowning, a dislocated shoulder while disembarking a ship. He probably fell. But a dislocated shoulder is not really, you know, that bad. It depends. Um, he f fell off several horses. He got hit by a car and he was in a plane crash. And he survived all that till the age of 90. I never knew that all about him, you know, all about him. Is that proper English? I didn't know that about him. He was the first recipient of the term OMG. You know, oh my God. It was first used in a letter to him in 1917 by, written to him by a retired admiral of the British Navy complaining about Britain's naval strategy in the First World War against Germany. And that retired admiral was Lord Fisher. He meant it sarcastically. Oh my God. Well, don't most people mean it sarcastically? Anyway, another fact about Churchill, he started smoking at an early age. His mother despised that. She despised the habit and promised to buy him a pony if he quit for six months. 
He was 15 years old at the time. Unfortunately, I know people who started smoking earlier than that. He did quit. I guess he got his bony. And he resumed smoking six months later. After, the, you know, the six months elapsed. He was well known for smoking cigars. He had one named after him, the Cuban Churchill Cigar. It was about seven inches long and 19 millimeters wide. So I don't happen to like cigars. I don't know if any of you do. I think they smell terrible. And I've been around people who bought decent cigars. I know there's a difference, but they still smell horrible to me. I don't like smoking either, but that's each to their own. It's a bad habit. Um, so that's about it. <laughs> I have nothing else to talk about. Um, it's been just been busy with work. I had somebody today try to do a tax return and it turns out he filed before under a different name. So I didn't do his tax return. <laughs> he was lying out of his teeth. Oh my goodness. And I kept, I would, I'm very calm. I don't pass judgment. I just ask basic questions. Oh, he was getting himself tripping over his words. And finally I said to him, I cannot do your return. And he didn't argue with me. Interesting, interesting. Um, just something else. So I hope everybody has a good night and maybe I will see you tomorrow. Take care, bye.